Oh, good evening. You might wonder why we're all here dressed yeah. in uh, plastic smocks, but tonight we're here for a very unusual event. We've called it Puzzled, and that's because we are going to attempt to drink from a selection of puzzle jugs that have been made by Master Potter, Peter Mealy. Peter, please tell us a little bit about the jugs and what we're here for tonight. <laughs> I've been doing salt lace now for about 35 years. Originally, I was known as a teapot maker. Subsequently, the made went into over jugs. But during COVID, I realized in fact that I needed a different kind of subject. And I made the connection that for me, it's the dispensing of liquid, whether it's beer or mead or water or tea, that's the important thing. So 18 months ago, at the beginning of COVID, I started to research this thing. And I contacted, first of all, Henry Sanders. And I said, Henry, where are, all, where are all the puzzle jokes? Because I know there must have been a lot of them. And he said to me, I'll ask Son John. And Son John came to me 20 minutes later and he showed me this thing. Son John was fantastic. This definitive paper written by a guy called Robert Crossley. And what it does, it defines all the puzzle jokes known in existence. And that actually, the the challenge, the test of actually working on different systems was one of the kind of prime things from my point of view. And so what you've got here is about a third of the puzzle jokes that I've made during the kind of year started from, from COVID. So over the last 15 months, I've made about 40 puzzle jokes. They're all different. I enjoy the different challenges. I enjoy the different mechanics. And they are here to be used and to be enjoyed. So in the traditional uh, of tavern drinking and puzzle jugs, what, what we intend to do now is to see if we can make the puzzle jugs work for us or if we're going to end up in a soaking mess on our pre-prepared bin line of floor. <laughs> well, another, another, no wonder Peter got bored of making character jugs because he did one of me. And if you're stretching it to actually make one of me, then it's time to look at making something different. So it's much better that we've got this selection of puzzle jugs here. So um, but I'm gonna give you a clue. When I went to Northern Ireland 50 years ago, I bought that in Bradford before I went. And one of the good things about it is it's broken. And when you actually look at it, you can see the flow of the liquid inside it. And you can also see they've got so many different holes which must be covered because if you're going to try to pop to drink from it by, say, selecting one of these things and you leave any of the orifices open, you won't get anything coming up. So if you are, perhaps I shouldn't be saying to you. No, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> We've got to sort out where the holes are first, first of all. Or they make a right bloody mess. Brilliant. Well, I'm afraid we're using Spanish lager, it seems, which doesn't seem that appropriate. We should be using some uh, dusty old bitter, shouldn't we, probably? Is, is sure. Scout or mead. But we've all got a drive to do. Can someone fill me up, please? I'm on zero, so I'm right. You're on zero. Uh, why have I got the feeling that I've got it? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I want to think. Yeah, yeah, the the what tacky, so we, we, we take it in turn with contenders. Yep. Well, first of all, let's introduce Mr. Sam Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a tight bit here? Okay. Are oh, you just going for it? Was it empty? Hey! Hey! Very good. Snap, really? Yeah. Let's get rid of our next sir. Oh, we're Our youngest auctioneer here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right. Right. He's got his holes covered. He's shaking. He's shaking. He's doing it now. Well done. Nice one. Yeah. No need for a plastic smock. That would be great to do it without him, wouldn't it? He has just come back from Benidorm. Yeah. So <laughs> 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 Not the spell. Okay. That's not going to work. Use your fingers. That's what it's meant to happen. Use your fingers. 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 Use your fing
20 years older than me, so I was 15, he would have been so 35 or 40. Mm -hmm. He probably didn't realise how important that year that he gave me was. Yeah. And I would have loved to have sort of said, if anyone knows anyone, mm. you know, who's his granddad, his uncle, his <laughs> brother, anything, just tell him how grateful I am for what happened. Uh, 60 years ago. Yeah. 62 years ago. You know. 
That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Life change, time change. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when I went to York School of Art, the NDB painting, and I found oh, okay. pottery skills were better than people who have been doing it for two years. Wow. You know. So you find your calling. And a guy called Bob Brumby, who became the principal, but in charge of ceramics, he came up to me and said, Pete, do you want to go to the Royal College? I said, yeah. He said, well, I'll get you there. You'll have to work for me. So we worked. You know, he did a whole load of architectural yeah, commissions. And, you know. <laughs> and it was great. So those two people have been very, very important for me. Yeah. What was the Royal College like in the fourth, sixth <coughs> year when you were there? Ten, ten. Four, four. Was it? Well, I was naive. Traditional. I was young. Yeah. I was there for still Trent. You know, right. I knew nothing. I'd done nothing. Two years later, you got people like Alison Bricknell coming in, and they were there to make pots. I was. I made architectural ceramics. My degree show. Queensbury brought in the Saratella. I looked at my work. Said, I like your work. My office is down in Oxford Street. Come and see me this Saturday. If you can come. I said, oh, fuck. I don't want to stay in London. I hated. I hated London. I never turned up. <laughs> I never turned up. And who was that guy? I've got no idea. It would have became the kind of chair of the British, I don't know. This <laughs> <laughs> is said the British idea. Pottery Federation or something. <clears throat> but I never turned up. I know. And then I went I went to Bradford, made a mess of that. Went over to Belfast and everything fell on the feet. There were three of us. You know, one guy taught me to throw and he was a salt breaker. And everything came from that, you know. And I ran ceramics for twenty five years. 